I have not introduced this vlog yet so hi <laughs> i'm wearing my spy family t-shirt that i unboxed in a previous video this video is actually about me trying to read for 24 hours not in the sense of a day but rather the timer format so i'm not sure if you've seen other people do it before but you probably have they basically take a timer of 24 hours and they just start the timer whenever they stop to do other things they just stop the timer so it's just 24 hours of pure reading i needed that format for this video because i don't really have much time this week to dedicate one whole day of 24 hours to read so i thought why not try the 24 hour timer method so that's what i tried and have actually started already i do think this will take me a few days to finish the 24 hours because if it's 24 hours of pure reading and my day is filled with other activities one or two days is not enough let me show you where i am currently yeah so i'm currently at 21 hours and 37 minutes left so quite a while to go the books that i have started so let's talk about them the first one is actually a thousand steps into night by tracy chi so this one is a fantasy a young adult fantasy let me read to you the synopsis in the realm of Awara, where gods, monsters, and humans exist side by side, Miyoko is an ordinary girl resigned to a safe if uneventful existence as an innkeeper's daughter. But when Miyoko is cursed and begins to transform into a demon with a deadly touch, she embarks on a quest to reverse the the curse and return to a normal life. Aided by a teething magpie spirit and continuously thwarted by a demon prince, Nyoko must outfox tricksters, escape demon hunters and negotiate with feral gods if she wants to make it home again. But with her transformation comes power and freedom she never even dreamed of and she'll have to decide if saving her soul is worth trying to cram herself back into an ordinary life that no longer fits her and perhaps never did. This is a standalone and I've heard so many good things about Tracy Chi so I really wanted to give this a try. So far, I have taken some time to get used to the world because I haven't really been reading a lot of fantasy so you need to have a certain mindset when you read fantasy to get used to the world and the fantasy elements and all that. I'm slowly slowly starting to get more used to the world and what I really like about this book is that there are actually footnotes of the different spiritual elements or what the terms that they call it. So for example what I have on this page chapter 7 is Koski Siu Maru Koski Siu Maru I think it's Japanese inspired but I may be wrong this one is just how to pronounce it but there are others where there are the pronunciations and the meaning of what it means I found that really interesting because it's helped me to understand more about this world and it's just very intriguing but i'm still at the start actually so as i mentioned i was at chapter 7 page 34 so not much progress has been made yet but looking forward to read this in this vlog and hopefully you have high ratings the ebook that i'm currently reading now is the dead romantics by Ashley Poston. So this is actually the author of the Geekerella Princess and the Fangirl Bookish and the Beast that series. I didn't know that this was coming out but when it came out I was like oh wait, let's start reading it and the premise though oh my gosh. Florence Day is the ghostwriter for one of the most prolific romance authors in the industry and she has a problem. After a terrible breakup, she no longer believes in love. It's as good as dead. When her new editor, a too handsome mountain of a man, won't give her an extension on her book deadline, Florence prepares to kiss her career goodbye. But then she gets a phone call she never wanted to receive and she must return home for the first time in a decade to help her family bury her beloved father. For 10 years, she's run from the town that never understood her and even though she misses the sound of a warm southern night and her eccentric loving family and their funeral parlor, she can't bring herself to stay. Even with her father gone, it feels like nothing in this town has changed and she hates it. Until she finds a ghost standing at the funeral parlor's front door, just as broad and infuriatingly handsome as ever and he's just as confused about why he's there as she is. Romance is most certainly dead but so is her new editor and his unfinished business will have her second guessing everything she's ever known about love stories. So have you ever seen a concept like this? Because I haven't and I was like oh my gosh this is so good. I have read paranormal romances before. It wasn't a published work or anything. I think it was like an online story about these two. The girl is a human and the guy is a ghost or something like that and then they were having some sort of romance. It's been very long but that's the most similar thing that I could relate the date romantics to but oh my god it's definitely not the same and it's 
so interesting because we have this mystery of why the editor cannot move on from this world and how they're gonna help him move on or will there be a romance between the two of them how is that gonna work because one is a human one is a ghost there's also this mystery of okay so her father died right so he has actually a list of things he wants to have at his funeral and she's also trying to figure out how to get those things because it's kind of like a riddle so i don't think it's like you take it literally so there's all these different mysteries going on there's also a romance there's a book element also with the ghostwriter part and the editor part and you know i love books about books so it's like oh my gosh i really hope this will be a favorite or like a good read because the concept is so good yeah if not it's going to be the greatest disappointment so i have my hopes high for this too and i'll just continue updating you along the way when i'm done if there are any updates and what other books i'll pick up so yeah i hope you enjoy this video Hi, it has been a few days since my previous update so let me update you on the time that we still have left we have 14 hours and 20 minutes left about halfway soon let me update you on what i have been reading and how far i've gotten i have gotten to page 221 of a thousand steps into night i am actually at part two already something very interesting happened in part two so it wasn't something that i was expecting to happen and it's kind of burning my brain a little bit it's quite interesting i'm finding this part more interesting because i feel like the first half it kind of stuck to the synopsis given but there was just something lacking for me so i wasn't really feeling it that much but it was still an enjoyable read just maybe because i feel like it's meant for a younger ya audience so the writing isn't the best but the plot itself is okay it's quite good but part two though i'm quite interested to find out what happens in part two we shall see what i'll rate this in the end and as for the dead romantics, oh my gosh, I've been feeling that more actually. I am 76% of the way through, so I'm almost going to be done with it. And I really still love the concept so much. I think I can guess what's going to happen next. I shall update you on whether or not I'm correct. I don't want to say anything because it might be spoilers. I just realized that actually both books have ghosts present in the story. So it could have been a themed reading vlog, but I don't think I have anything else on my TBR that has ghosts. Oh, I'm actually 83% of the way through the dead romantics it just updated itself i'm really enjoying that the whole paranormal element is making this otherwise typical love story so much more interesting and the fact that the main character is from a family that actually runs a funeral home is so interesting as well because i've never had much opportunity to look at characters in stories wherein they are from funeral homes in a sense so yeah it's quite interesting i can really feel their chemistry as well even though one is a ghost one is a human I hope it's a happy ending. I would think that it would be but yes I will keep you updated and I actually finished a graphic novel the other day. I think yesterday. <laughs> I read it within the day. It was called The Tea Dragon Festival. So I actually read the first book in the series The Tea Dragon Society in a previous reading vlog. Tea Dragon Festival is the sequel of that and I enjoyed this better than the first book because I felt like the plot in The Tea Dragon Festival is more present and I liked the plot more there is still lgbt representation in this and oh, there's also sign language representation in this a lot of diversity in this the story is good and the romance is good the art style is good there is even this tea dragon handbook at the back of the book and i was just like it's so cute oh my gosh i can clearly remember this tea dragon called marshmallow which is so cute i finally finished one book in this reading vlog so far i still have 14 hours to go so hopefully i can finish both of these books soon and then i can move on to another book and yeah i'll keep you updated
Good morning! It's the next day and I have since finished three books. We have since completed four books for this reading vlog. Let's just quickly wrap up all my thoughts and let you know what I've thought about them. So the first book that I finished was The Dead Romantics. I gave it 4.25 stars in the end because it was so cute. Trigger warnings for death of a loved one, grief, panic attack, car accident, cheating ex fiance bullying and murder of the female main character's classmate. I love the concept so much as I mentioned earlier, it will definitely be a memorable story for me. One of the more memorable romances that I've ever read. I feel like some of the reviewers might argue that this is technically not a romance because there wasn't a lot of steamy scenes or not really heavily romance focused in a sense. So I've seen some people shelve it as fantasy as well because of the paranormal elements but to me it's like romance with fantasy elements. It's something that I enjoy. I think in the previous clip I mentioned that I was anticipating this particular plot twist or particular turn of events in the story and I don't think I mentioned what it was but I was correct so I think it's quite easily predictable it's nice to see that I'm correct and I liked the ending so yeah after that I finished a thousand steps into night so I gave it 3.5 stars and trigger warnings for sexual assault attempt murder and misogyny so for this one i think i mentioned before but the writing is not exactly phenomenal it feels like it's meant for a younger YA audience which i wasn't expecting when i first picked up the book i also said that i enjoyed the second half much more than the first because it was kind of burning my brain a little bit trying to figure out the logic of things but I felt like the ending was kind of mad. What excited me was that burning brain part in the second half. The ending was what I expected. But yeah, I don't know. I guess that's the thing with fantasy standalones as well because you don't have the luxury of multiple books to set the world, set the plot, the characters and things like that. You have to finish everything in the set amount of pages and that's not an easy thing to do. So I do think that this is a very good story for a younger Y audience, just not something that is for me necessarily. I still enjoyed it. 3.5 stars is not a bad rating. And the last book that I finished was a novella. So I finally finished the series by Ali Hazelwood, the Staminist novellas because I finished Below Zero. So this one is probably my favourite out of all three of them. If I were to rank it, I would put Below Zero on top, then Under One Roof, then Stuck With You. I didn't really enjoy Stuck With You that much. This one I felt like it was the most exciting to me because of the plot. The two main characters, their professions are space related and it's so intriguing to read about it. The way that they got together, I could feel the sexual tension. Okay, this might be spoiler, so I'm just gonna put a spoiler warning. But it's like there was miscommunication again. Not really miscommunication in the sense that direct miscommunication, but there was a presence of a third party, so there was a kind of misinterpreted information. There was theme of miscommunication was still there which is not something I typically enjoy in romance books or rather in any book actually. It was going to be a four stars because I thought it was very cute until the last chapter because the last chapter which was the sex scene that everybody was waiting for. The male main character Ian, he kept likening the female main character Hannah's body parts to topographical features on Mars. And I was just like so cringe. It really reminded me of when I read The Love Hypothesis. So there's spoilers for that also during the sex scene where I don't know, he was talking about something about biology related stuff with her body. There was this reference there. I can't really remember the exact thing, but I, think I mentioned it in a previous video as well. We don't need that extra information <laughs> in the sex scenes. No, thank you. It's a bit cringy. Okay, the same thing about Ali Hazelwood's books is that the guy is always like a mountain, the female is always like a tiny pee that kind of thing so it's getting a bit tiring to be honest but okay i didn't really mind it that much in this book i am waiting for love on the brain to come out next month oh my god it's gonna be august soon i'm so excited i really hope we won't get that reference again but i feel like we might so i have no idea what i'm gonna feel about love on the brain but we shall see so yeah in the end i gave it 3.75 stars i couldn't decide what book i wanted to read next so i actually put a poll on instagram and i got them to choose for me based on two emojis per poll option yeah so i'm just gonna show you the results so as of right now 61 percent have voted for the tea pot 
and the teacup emoji and 39% have voted for the house and city emoji so the teapot teacup one was actually for this book it was for a magic steeped in poison look at the teacup over here it's so pretty right this book oh my gosh don't mind my little bookmark that's just swinging around so yeah this was the emoji for this one so it won the prompt and so i'm gonna read this but the other option that i had was the house and the city one it was actually for this book the apartment upstairs i couldn't find an emoji for stairs i couldn't find an emoji for an apartment so that was what i settled for it was like a short thriller that i thought i could put into this vlog but if i finish this one a magic steeped in poison and i still have time i will read the apartment upstairs lies lies and more lies and lies on top of lies so this one was kindly sent to me by times reads and okay the reason why i couldn't decide was because this is a thriller things are most likely more fast-paced and i haven't read a thriller in quite a while so i was kind of in a mood for it as well as i should be getting a move on with the books that times reads have sent to me but this book is due soon i think i put a post up on my instagram before and i was asking people from my library hall what book do you want me to read first and this one and the puppy one were mentioned and so i'm starting with this one first so yeah i'll be starting with that and okay my last update before i stop this clip is that yesterday i went to the library i went to the jurong regional library and i kind of got five books i need to stop it with the library books but okay so i'm just gonna do a quick haul library haul project hail mary i can't remember if i showed you that i actually already borrowed another copy of this but i actually returned that one and borrowed this one instead because the other copy that i had was the large print edition and i prefer it not to be so large the font so i got it in like the normal font instead not that there's anything wrong with large print it's just that i'm more used to normal size font but it doesn't really affect me that much but yeah the next one i got was my mechanical romance and it's also one of my anticipated releases for 2022 so maybe i might be reading this in this vlog or so i do not know maybe i put another poll to let them choose again this one was just a sci-fi that won the Goodreads Choice Award for the sci-fi category. This one is a 2022 release romance and it's actually written by the author of the Atlas 6. Like how did I not know this? The names are different so she wrote under a different name. My friend read this and she didn't enjoy it so I'm curious to see how I will feel about this book. And the next one I got was The Formidable Miss Cassidy which is a singlet book oh my gosh it's the co-winner of the 2021 Epigram Books Fiction Prize. Then we have Notes on an Execution by Danya Kukafka oh my gosh I'm so sorry I actually read this before I DNF it has since gotten a lot of hype and I'm very intrigued and the reason I DNF'd it the last time from my Goodreads review it was that I didn't know if I wasn't feeling this book or I just wasn't feeling thrillers at that moment but since then I haven't read much thriller so I'm kind of in the mood for it so I shall see and this one is actually the large print edition so yeah I didn't expect to find this in the library to be honest I just saw it by chance and I was like oh my god because I thought the library didn't have a copy of this but I think the one that I was searching for was the one with the normal print but they actually had this so I was very pleasantly surprised and I brought it home with me and last but not least I have The Dragon Republic by RF Kuang I actually have not read The Poppy War yet <laughs> but i feel like i will need the sequel immediately after so i decided to get it just in case but look at how thick this one is oh my gosh this is kind of scary <laughs> that was my library haul i'm gonna be making cookies later with a cookie mix and stuff so if i remember i'll put a time lapse or some kind of clip about me doing that to kind of mix things up a bit for this reading vlog and i hope you are enjoying it so far so we have since finished four books oh let me show you the timer first oh my gosh i almost forgot 9 hours and 47 minutes and 54 seconds. I still have quite a bit more to go. We are more than halfway but almost there. I am not done with any of the books yet. <laughs> I just came here to give you a short update. So because 
I am in a particularly chatty mood. <laughs> so, timer situation. We have 5 hours and 9 minutes left. Okay, this is not very, very accurate because ever since I started this video idea, I have had trouble conscientiously starting the timer when I read and stopping the timer when I don't read. So for example, there have been times where I've been reading and then I forgot to turn on the timer so I will estimate and just let a few minutes go by. But it's just a very rough estimate at this point. So I do hope you still understand. Yesterday night, I was reading before I fell asleep so I started the timer and then I forgot to stop it. So I woke up in the middle of the night and then I was like, why are there only two hours left? Which is not correct because I remember before I went to sleep, it was like six hours or five hours plus. So I reset the timer a bit. So it may not be the most accurate timer, but I hope you still understand. It's my first time doing this. I'll be better from now on. I also wanted to add one last thing for the dead romantics was that I found the logic of the spirit abilities a bit strange because at the start I remember there was this scene I don't think this is spoilers but I'll put a spoiler warning in case you don't want to hear anything about it there was this scene where they were in a bookshop and Ben the ghost right in his ghost form I think he couldn't take books off the shelves and read them because he is a ghost so he can't touch things and things like that but then towards the end there was this particular scene where they were both in the room together and he could lie down on the bed which didn't make sense to me because if you cannot touch things and stuff like that and you can pass through doors how can you lie on the bed it's just a minor thing but i found that a little bit weird but yeah it doesn't really affect my rating in any way so that was that i have been reading a magic steeped in poison so this is my little bookmark over here don't you think it fits the theme quite well this let me show it to you it's like a crane and then the other end is a cloud and i don't know i feel like it fits so well i am currently at page 186 and i don't know if you can see but i've actually tapped it i will remove it because it's a library book but i just felt like i had to so i have one tap for the glossary oh my gosh the glossary guys so i'm gonna insert the clip where i flipped through it like oh my gosh it's so good like i really love when there are extra things in the book like this like glossary like how to pronounce the things like that and it's so interesting i find myself keep going back to fact check myself because i don't actually need the glossary because i am chinese and i can technically read the honey pinging and kind of infer from the chinese words like what sound it should be in but i like to double check there's different tables for characters character names locations and the names of medicine so i felt like this book has a lot of references to all these chinese medicine right it kind of reminds me of traditional chinese medicine so tcm because of things like tang kui and things like that and it's so good oh my gosh i really hope my rating doesn't change but i have very good feelings about this book yeah i think I have not actually read to you what this book is about. <laughs> okay, so let me read it to you. For Ning, the only thing worse than losing her mother is knowing that it's her own fault. She was the one who unknowingly brewed the poison tea that killed her mother. The poison tea that now threatens to also take her sister Shu. When Ning hears of a competition to find the kingdom's greatest Shen Nong Shi, masters of the ancient and magical art of tea making, she travels to the imperial city to compete. The winner will receive a favor from the princess, which may be Ning's only chance to save her sister's life. But between the backstabbing competitors, the bloody court politics, and a mysterious and handsome boy with a shocking secret, Ning might actually be the one in more danger. I really enjoy the atmosphere, the writing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. The descriptions of food especially. Oh my gosh, I tapped this because I wanted to talk to you about it. There's this particular scene. I'm just talking about the food, so I don't think it's a spoiler. But yeah, so they were talking about describing the food, right? It's just one example, okay? I'm just gonna read it to you. We are given buns with airy pockets inside them, a center of juicy pork mixed with minced shallots and ginger. He brings us a soup pot with an entire deep fried fish head bobbing inside it, surrounded by cabbage, tofu, goat mushrooms, and bean curd. The soup is meant to be eaten with grilled radish cakes for dipping into the broth. Yeah, so okay, the one with the buns, right? I'm thinking it's Kong Pa Pao, which is one of my favorites. Actually, I didn't used to appreciate the pork inside the pork belly, San Chen Ro, and I used to just eat the bun plain, and I loved it so much. But now I enjoy the combination of it as well, and it's so good. I first heard of this actually via Carrie Can Read, her channel, and I was so intrigued. And also, I picked this up because the concluding book to this duology is coming out soon in August. I can't wait to read the sequel already. <laughs> 
And I'm not sure if it's because I'm Chinese. I can read the names, I can relate to the culture, the food described. I'm just relating so much to it. And maybe that's why my enjoyment of this book is increased. But okay, I think it may be difficult for people who don't understand Chinese to even read the names. So maybe they just skim over it. So for Chinese, there are the four sounds. I'm just gonna put on the screen. <laughs> I'm just enjoying it so much. For example, there may be this name in the book. In English, it's small u, but in Chinese, it's xiao wu. So I'm not doing a good job of explaining this, but the author of this is Taiwanese. So I'm very, very intrigued. This is apparently her debut novel and I'm enjoying it so much. Like how even? And I'm finding that the plot is quite interesting also because there is essentially this tea competition but it keeps getting interrupted by assassination attempts or unexpected situations that occur. It helps to keep the plot not stale in a sense so it keeps it moving. I would have preferred more of the competition aspect because for now it isn't a lot. It isn't mainly focused on that but Maybe throughout the rest of the book, I'll get to see more of the competition. And oh my gosh, the tea descriptions, the magic of this world is so... I love it so much. So good. I'm finding it a bit difficult to understand the magic, essentially. But the vibes though, is so good that I'm willing to overlook it. So I really hope the second half doesn't disappoint me. And that it can become one of my favourites. And also look at this cover. Like, what the heck? How is such a beautiful cover that it will be my updates for this and i will continue updating you when i have updates Do you not think this fits this so well? <laughs> okay, so as you would have seen, the timer has finally come to an end and I managed to squeeze in a few more books. Let's first talk about, I don't think I've given you my final review and rating for A Magic Steeped in Poison, so let me talk about it. Trigger warnings for grief, death of a parent, and sexual harassment. In the end, I gave it 5 stars so everybody we have done it we have gotten our second five star of this year oh my god like finally okay if i want to be super technical harsh and critical it will be a 4.75 stars but i'm just gonna round it up to five stars which is what i always do when there's a 0.75 and i have found a new favorite fantasy oh my gosh i really hope that my feeling for this wouldn't change after a few months but i don't know i'm really scared for the sequel that is coming soon which is a venom dark and sweet because okay the vibes remained throughout just that i think in the middle it kind of dipped a little bit or towards the end after the exciting twists were done there was also a little dip but i don't think it really affected my rating which was why technically i would have given it 4.75 but overall it is a five star and i can understand why people won't really enjoy this if they find the romance not very convincing or they don't really or like Ning as a character and okay for me I didn't really enjoy the romance as well I would have done without it to be honest because I was very much more focused on the tea competition I liked that we have a proper ending for it and there's a proper conclusion even though throughout the book it kept getting interrupted by the different attempts on the princess's life for me there are some issues that I have with series whereby if we have a first book most of the first book is about setting the world and then not much conclusion is done to the plot or there are still quite a lot of plot holes that will be answered in the following books in the series but for me this one had quite a good conclusion to it despite the fact that 
it still ends on a cliffhanger. There were still things that got tied up and there were still things that shocked me. And although I still don't really understand the magic of this world with the tea and everything, I got the gist of it and I really enjoyed my reading experience. It was the first time in a long time where I didn't want to stop reading. And I think this book mainly was the one where it helped me throughout this reading challenge to actually keep going because with the timer I found that there are times when you just feel there's a lot of time left it's gonna take me very long so it's very demotivating in a sense but this one with how exciting it was I didn't mind that I kept reading it helped me because I was in very much of a reading mood after that and I continued to finish other books so yeah this will be one of my favorites and I'm very excited and also very scared for the concluding book to come out because if I'm already giving this five stars the next book has a lot to follow up with. Once again, I really enjoyed the glossary, the world that is set in is very much inspired by Chinese mythology and as I mentioned earlier, I think might be because of the fact that I'm Chinese also so I could relate. I enjoyed seeing representation in this book. People need to know more about Chinese mythology. There have always been other Asian fantasies that I enjoyed reading but they weren't exactly favourites of mine but I'm so happy that I really enjoyed this one. So yeah, I'm very excited for August 23rd for the next book to come out and after that I went on to, I don't even think I updated you about this but I went on to read and finish the hand on the wall which means I have finished the original trilogy of this series I am not going to be picking up the box in the woods because it's still about Stevie Bell but it's about a different mystery so I don't think I'll be picking that up and let me tell you my thoughts about this one I almost hit myself oh my gosh let me tell you my a lot of trigger warnings for this one trigger warnings for alcoholism anxiety child neglect death including child dissection drug addiction kidnapping gun violence murder panic attacks and social anxiety overall I gave it a 2.75 stars which is lower than what I gave the second book so in my opinion the best book in this series is The Vanishing Stair this one didn't really do much for me to be honest and I was very very much feeling very mad throughout the whole time I was reading this. I just wanted to know who did it and by then I was just like oh okay so this person did it okay good to know. I just wanted to be done with the story so I didn't really like any of the characters which is quite disappointing because there are quite a number of characters in this story and the mystery I felt like it didn't need to be three books because essentially the mystery is something that happened a long time ago and then we also have chapters from the past that interspersed throughout the book it kind of gives you the answer and then you'll find out how Stevie goes on to discover that answer in present day and I didn't really like that format so the mystery wasn't that good for me also so it's kind of a forgettable mystery to me which is why I will not be continuing with The Box in the Woods. I am glad to finish this series because one of my goals was to finish more series. The last book that I completed for this challenge is a graphic novel. It is actually The Tea Dragon Tapestry by K. O'Neill. So I read The Tea Dragon Festival in this video as well. So reading both books from the same series here and I finished this series as well. So we have finished two series and this one I gave it 3.75 stars and trigger warning for grief in this story I thought that again the best book in the series was the Tea Dragon Festival because I enjoyed the plot for that more I feel like the main characters for the Tea Dragon Tapestry were much younger which was why I didn't really enjoy or relate to the characters as much not that it's a bad thing it's just that it's what I prefer I prefer the plot and the characters from the second book this one was still very cute but yeah I gave it 3.75 stars not a bad rating it's just that I liked the Tea Dragon Festival the most. So yeah, that concludes this video. Here are the three beautiful books that I've read for this challenge in hardcover. These three over here, as well as my four ebook reads. So in conclusion, I read seven books in 24 hours. Although there might be a few inaccuracies here and there because of the issues I had with the timer, I will put the number of pages that I've read over here because I'm currently too lazy to calculate. <laughs> I think seven books in 24 hours is quite good. That's my personal record so the timer method obviously works better in terms of giving you more time to read and read more books and more pages but also it will drag quite long if you are like me we don't have that 
long hours in the day or you don't feel particularly motivated to just sit and read for the timer and you have to keep making sure that you start the timer when you read and then you stop when you don't read that kind of thing I may do this kind of challenge again in the future if you want me to do let me know in the comments as well if you are still here comment a star emoji because I'm currently wearing a star and moon earring I hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see more of my videos you can subscribe you can like this video to let me know I hope you're having a good day a great week and whenever or wherever you're watching this and I will see you in my next video